Hello students, today we are going to learn the chapter Socialism in Europe and the Russian Revolution. We'll begin with module 1, that is the age of social change. In the previous chapter students, you read about the powerful ideas of liberty, equality, fraternity. You read about freedom and equality that circulated in Europe after the French Revolution that broke out in 1789. The French Revolution opened up the possibility of creating a dramatic change in the way in which society was structured. We'll look briefly at some of the important political traditions of the 19th century and see how they influenced change, how they brought about change. Let us study about liberals, radicals and conservatives. One of the groups which looked to change society were the liberals. Liberals wanted a nation which tolerated all religions. That means the liberals were open-minded as far as religion was concerned. But they opposed the uncontrolled power of dynastic rulers. They safeguarded the rights of individuals against governments. They argued for a representative. They were in favor of elected parliamentary government. However, they were not Democrats. They did not believe in universal adult franchise, that is, the right of every citizen to cast his or her vote. They felt men of property mainly should have the voting powers. Propertied class, the class that owns property, should be given the voting rights. They also did not want the vote for a woman. In contrast, the radicals wanted a nation in which government was based on majority of a country's population. Many supported the privileges of suffragette movements. A movement to give women the right to vote is called as suffragette movements. They opposed the privileges of great landowners and wealthy factory owners. They were not against the existence of private property, but disliked concentration of property in the hands of few, concentration of power in the hands of few. In the 18th century, conservatives had been generally opposed to the idea of change. In the 19th century, they accepted that some change was inevitable, unavoidable, but believed that the past had to be respected and change had to be brought about through a slow process. Such differing ideas about societal change clashed during the social and political crisis, the turmoil that followed the French Revolution. Let us understand the industrial society and social change. Political trends were signs of a new time. New cities came up. New industrialized regions developed. Railways expanded and the industrial revolution took place. Industrialization brought men, women and children to factories. Work hours were often long and wages were poor. Unemployment was common, particularly during times of low demand for industrial goods. Housing and sanitation were problems since towns were growing rapidly. So you can say that these were the evils of industrial revolution. That is unemployment, housing problem, sanitation problem and even the breakout of widespread diseases. Liberals and radicals searched for solutions to these issues. All industries were the property of individuals. Liberals and radicals themselves were often property owners and employers. Having made their wealth through the trade or industrial ventures, they felt that such efforts should be encouraged that its benefits would be achieved if the workforce in the economy was healthy and citizens were educated. In 1815, some nationalist, liberals and radicals wanted revolutions to put an end to the kind of governments established in Europe. 
The London poor in the mid 19th century, you can see in the picture, this was seen by a contemporary Henry Mayhew, London Labour and the London Poor in 1861. 